welcome uh, everyone. I think this is number eight in Mr. McLeod's uh, Sport Tourism Culture Heritage Industries uh, Telephone Town Halls, and they've been awesome. So if you've not joined before, uh, I think we've had like 5,000 people that have. Here's how it works. You hit three on your phone. It will put you through for a live question to minister. We do have some uh, that were pre-submitted. I'll try to get through as many of those as I can. But she loves to hear directly from you with your advice and your questions. And certainly there's going to be a lot because if you're like me, um, my family and I, it was almost like the night before Christmas last night, really looking forward to today's announcement because we want to get out and about and enjoy all that Ontario has to offer across heritage sports, culture, and tourism. And certainly exciting news released by Premier Ford and ministers like McLeod today about stage three reopening, of course, done in a sensible and pragmatic way with a regional opening uh, with some restrictions in some areas and more loosening in others. But look, we'll get all that from the minister momentarily. So again, we're looking at a, a great crowd today, minister. You're representing a $74 billion industry. You've already delivered in a major way with enhanced funds for marketing and for assistance. And we want to thank you because you've listened to these calls. You've got a bat at the cabinet table. And now we're seeing a lot more of the folks who are on this call today able to open up or expand what they're offering to their fans right across the province. So at that, Minister, I'll turn it to you for your opening comments. And again, folks, hit three on your phone if you want to ask the Minister a direct question. Minister McLeod, thank you for your leadership. We look forward to your words. Uh, thanks very much, Tim. And I, I appreciate your leadership during this time. As someone who has been in this ministry uh, through a crisis, uh, help uh, guide me and, and provide advice and uh, be, I think, a comforting voice to a lot of people on this call um, throughout the period. Uh, before I get going, um, you know, obviously today is a big day, but um, I really want to single out uh, my Deputy Minister, Nancy Matthews, as well as my Chief of Staff, Susan Truppe, and our respective teams in the ministry. Every single member of this team, whether they work uh, in um, tourism, in, in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, in culture, in Windsor, um, or in the ministry drafting policy, has, uh, I'm not sure if any of them have taken one single day off, and I, I mean every weekend, uh, worried about what they do, and so um, just um, a bit emotional. A lot of hard work pays yeah. off, right? It'll be an emotional yeah. day for everybody. Yeah, very, just uh, I can't say thanks enough. And I know uh, the people on the call um, obviously support uh, what they do and what they've been doing. Uh, but today is an historic one that begins the long road to recovery and social recovery after battling and finally starting to contain COVID-19. We've arrived at this place thanks to the dedication and determination of our public health professionals, essential workers, and of course, 14 million Ontarians who cooperated in every way to bring us to this point. It's hard to believe that four months ago on this very day, the first emergency orders weren't active. Five of the seven coming from these sectors, essentially shutting down tourism, culture, sport, and heritage in the province. Since then, the state, state of emergency has been extended, and we eventually were able to move into phase two. Today marks an important one as parts of the province move into phase three, beginning on July 17th. This is welcome news to our sectors who have been particularly hard hit during this pandemic. We know there's a lot more work to do. For example, if so, market research indicates that 43% of Ontarians are uncomfortable attending a gallery or museum. 60% are uncomfortable attending an outdoor entertainment facility. 75% are uncomfortable going to a large concert venue and 55% so they would not be comfortable allowing their child to attend theater, dance, or music lessons. Data from Leger Leger and Abacus data also support these findings. We also know, however, Ontarians want to support these sectors. sectors. That was clear when over 260 deputations took place at the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs as the legislature studied the economic impacts of COVID-19 on our sectors. And this will help build the government's response to the heritage sport, tourism, and culture recovery. Over the last four months, we've announced nearly $300 million in direct investments in various initiatives to support our sectors, including over $200 million to the Ontario Arts Council, Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund, and Ontario Trillium Foundation to support our arts and creative sectors. We've revised regulations so contracts and freelance workers are eligible for Ontario's three refundable film and TV tax credits. For our emerging artists, I retooled the $7 million Ontario Music Fund to put more money 
into musicians' hands immediately. We also work with the industry to bring us music together to allow musicians to perform from the comfort and from the safety of their homes. We continue to invest $10 million in Quest for Gold and sport hosting despite postponements and cancellations. We invested $15 million into Ontario's after-school programs and Indigenous youth culture camps. For heritage and cultural institutions, we continue to flow more than $27 million, including $5 million to 166 community uh, museums, more than a million to 176 organizational development grants and heritage organizations, and $21 million to support 380 of our public libraries. For our tourism sector, we invested $13 million in new tourism funding provided through Destination Ontario to support marketing efforts in each one of our 13 RTOs. We retooled the Tourism Development and Recovery Fund and tripled our investment to $1.5 million. Restaurants and bars are now able to sell and deliver unopened alcohol, and we've expanded patios to accommodate social distancing requirements. Ontario Live is quickly becoming an arts and tourism online marketplace and town centre for Ontarians to access concerts, arts, digital galleries, and museum tours. Today's announcement by our Premier means nearly all businesses and public spaces will reopen in Stage 3 of the province's reopening framework. Notably, most of what reopens today are within this ministry. Business and organizations are required to operate in compliance with the applicable laws, advice, recommendations, and instructions of all public health officials. The following Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries sectors have been approved to reopen in phase three. Casinos and charitable gaming establishments subject to gathering limits and physical distancing measures. Our convention centers, meeting and event spaces, up to a limit of 50 people within the venue. Facilities for sport and recreation fitness activities, including gyms, fitness studios, and community centers. Fitting rooms, as long as patrons are not permitted to occupy adjacent fitting rooms. Interactive exhibits at museums, attractions, and heritage institutions, including museums, galleries, aquariums, zoos, science centers, landmarks, historic sites, and similar attractions. Libraries for all on-site services, so long as materials used are disinfected or quarantined before being recirculated. Live shows, performing arts, and movie theaters, including concerts, artistic events, theatrical productions, performances, and movie theaters. They may resume operations, including rehearsals, while maintaining physical distancing and respecting gathering limits. Recreational courses and instruction, including music lessons, language classes, and art classes. Recreational attractions and businesses, including arcade games, escape rooms, bowling alleys, pool halls. Restaurant bars and nightclubs, including concession stands and other food and drink establishments. Team sports and live sporting events, including amateur and recreational sports leagues, provided no physical contact between players. And tour and guide services including boat tours. Stage three regions will see increased gathering limits up to 50 people indoors and 100 people outdoors. These limits apply to indoor and outdoor events, such as community events or gatherings, concerts, live festivals, and more. A two meter distance must still be maintained for all events. However, on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer of Health, the following high risk places and activities are not yet safe to open. A music park, and water parks, saunas, steam rooms, bathhouses, table games at casinos and other establishments, and private karaoke rooms. I will continue to work with all aforementioned businesses and sectors that are not able to reopen in stage three or who are experiencing significant challenges um, to opening with restrictions by accepting proposals. For those in the sports industry, my ministry has consolidated sector-specific guidelines and returned to sport resources to help facilities, trainers, and athletes safely return to play at Ontario.ca backslash return to play. Again, for those of you who are parents and want to get your children back into sports or you're working with one of our provincially affiliated sports organizations, again, that is Ontario.ca backslash return to play. We're also making additional investments through our ministry to continue to support the recovery effort. To the sports sector, we're investing $13.5 million to support our amateur and professional athletes, including an additional $8.3 million to support our provincial sport organizations, 
through the Ontario Amateur Sport Fund. We're also investing more than $54 million to support our ministry attractions and agencies throughout the remainder of the year so they can safely welcome back visitors. Within the cultural sector, I'll be investing $375,000 into Ontario Culture Days to showcase the world in one province. Finally, we're continuing to support our regional tourism organizations with additionally $20 million as they play an essential role supporting small business to redesign and adapt their operations following COVID-19. In total, the ministry will flow close to $1 billion in funds from April the 1st to August 1st during these unprecedented times to best support our sectors. This is in advance of our provincial budget expected this fall. Friends, these last few months have taken a collective toll on all of us, but today there's hope. Through my travels to over 20 communities during phase two, I safely explored the province and I watched as Ontarians started to reconnect with their neighbors and their communities. I saw it while on a bike tour in Ottawa at a boat museum in Gananoque, Santa's Village up in Bracebridge, the scenic caves in Blue Mountain, Butterfly Conservancy in Niagara, the ROM in Toronto, the Trent Severn Waterway in Peterborough, the Burlington Art Gallery, the iconic St. Jacob's Farmer's Market in Kitchener, Fanshawe Pioneer Village in London, Halliburton Sculpture Forest and Windsor's Artist Alley in Maiden Lane. I've seen them all personally. And Thursday, as I wrap up my Phase 2 tour, I will embark on an additional three-week province-wide tour for Phase 3. I believe in our sectors. I'll do everything in my ability and power to support you. And that will start with leading by example. I encourage everyone on this call to send ideas on how me or your local member of provincial parliament can safely explore your organization or your community during this period of hyperlocal tourism. Please email minister.mcleod at ontario.ca with your ideas and please include your local MPP. It's important that as a province we invest in marketing, first with dollars, but secondly with our own demonstrated commitment to the rigorous health and safety protocols we have in place to protect us and others while enjoying the best this province has to offer. We've been hit first, hardest, and will take the longest to recover, but I'm committed to seeing this through, and I'll demonstrate to Ontarians that this province is truly ready for all of us to rediscover. Tim, I'll take any questions um, as long as we've got time. No, terrific, Minister. Thank you for that uh, very uh, inspiring uh, presentation. First, a lot of detail about the money that uh, you've uh, succeeded to get through a cabinet finance minister to reinvest in the sector and help on the road to recovery. But very importantly, very touching to hear your story of your travels across the province, uh, what you've seen in uh, every corner of the province, and how you are determined to see this through. So thank you for that. Uh, folks, you want to ask the minister a question directly again, please do press 3 on your phones again, press three on your phones to ask a minister a question and we will queue you up. We often get through a, uh, a lot of questions uh, directly uh, from you. And I know she enjoys hearing from leaders like yourselves uh, right across uh, our great province. All right, minister, we had a number of pre-submitted questions. So I'll we'll start with those ones. And, and obviously these were sent in before they knew the exciting news today. So there's probably more you can update than some of the specifics they ask in the questions. So uh, I'll go with uh, Andrew Weir. Andrew's with Destination uh, Toronto. And Andrew is asking, what steps is the government taking to enable meetings to be held in hotels and meeting venues with responsible and safe distancing protocols? Yeah, listen, uh, first and foremost, I want to say thanks to Andrew and the incredible team um, over at Destination Toronto. I had the opportunity to do an announcement with them uh, a couple of weeks ago at the ROM and uh, obviously committed to supporting their marketing efforts with a million dollar investment. Um you know, when we started to move toward um, the stage three reopening, uh, we started to engage uh, our hospitality sector, and hotel sector. And so we've been working uh, directly with Terry Mundell from the Greater Toronto Hotel Association. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm uh, telling tales out of school, but I already have a proposal uh, for the convention and meeting centers, um, both from uh, the Metro Toronto Convention Center and, and the Ottawa Convention Center, which are two of the assets in this ministry. Um, but again, from the, the um, from the uh, hoteliers and hospitality council, 
that I set up between Colin Morrison and Terry Mundell and, uh, and, and Tony Lenny and others. Um, so those processes right now um, have made their way through the ministry and uh, we're working directly with the command center. So I, I said this in my, in my speech, uh, Tim, or my statement, but if you're on that no-go list, as I call it, um, they, they've developed a process where uh, the ministry, in our case, can um, can work with our local uh, industry partner and sectoral partner uh, to go to the command table to see how we can best address some of these issues. And so we take very seriously the situation within our hotel uh, sector, uh, simply because, uh, you know, I think you were down to a um, I think it would be generous to say 10% capacity on average across the province in March and April. Uh, that's starting to see an uptick. And I personally had the opportunity to stay in a number of hotels across the province to um, view for myself the rigorous standards and protocols that are in place. But right now, uh, we're, we're trying to work through the existing system with the Chief Medical Officer of Health. And I know, Andrew, uh, it'll be a little bit more difficult for you because Toronto did not uh, move into stage um, three. But as the, pro as the Premier said earlier today, to continue to uh, assess the data and uh, and continue to uh, work with the Chief Medical Officer of Health in order to do that. So we're, we're going to continue to work in this sector. Minister, thanks very much. Let me do one more uh, of the pre-submitted uh, questions. And again, please do hit three on your phones. Hit three on your phones. You can ask the minister a question directly or pass on your advice. So before I do that, I will go to a question from Kelly O'Rourke. Kelly's with the town of Amherstburg, of course, in Amherstburg in southwestern Ontario. Uh, Kelly, uh, this is the way that Kelly phrased it. Can you guess when we will see festivals and events return to Ontario? So maybe a better way now, today's exciting news minister. So what does all this mean for festivals and events for the rest of the year? Well, look, we, uh, we've we already flowed just over, I think, $10 million for festivals that had to be cancelled. Um, we certainly understand that uh, some of these festivals and events have hundreds of thousands of people that go to them over a week period, so they wouldn't obviously be able to uh, appear um, at this particular moment. But one of the exciting things that we're doing with festivals and events, and I'll, I'll give you two, and, and one I, I can't wait to announce, but at, the, uh, at, at Ontario Place, for example, um, we're using the parking lot for a, a drive-in film festival multicultural film festival that starts next uh, Monday. In addition to that, uh, you know, we're starting to see uh, entrepreneurial ideas like Blues Fest in Ottawa uh, coming together in a different way. And so as long as that maintains the appropriate physical distancing, um, we'll, we're going to be able to, to, to uh, support those types of events. In addition, I don't know if I should say this or not, because I get a, I might get a dirty look from Susan and Derek, who are in the room with me, but I intend on opening up another funding stream uh, for festivals, and uh, and that will be very much geared toward recovery at a time when it's safer uh, for us to, to, to congregate again, um, and it might be this winter. Uh, I don't have a lot of the details worked out, but I certainly think after months of uh, self-isolation, and, uh, and and us uh, being told to stay apart, that when it's safer to do so, we should find safe ways to come together. And and I can confirm, I just got two dirty looks, Tim. <laughs> uh, I feel like my no mother's in here right now. <laughs> the five Jenny. benefits of using the restrictions, the dirty looks return. <laughs> <laughs> should I go on to the yeah. next question then, Minister? Yeah, sure. I want to get in as many as possible today. Yeah, super. Okay, so uh, again, you're listening to uh, Minister Lisa McLeod, the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries, Telephone Town Hall. Please do hit three if you want to ask a question. And I'm uh, Tim Hudak. I'm uh, very proud to host this as a former minister and the CEO of Ontario Real Estate Association, representing Ontario's 80,000 realtors. Okay, this this question, now we'll go to a live question, Eric. So let's uh, key up uh, Glenn. I, this is something I've never done, Minister, but I really want to try. And hopefully I'll get good news that I can do it soon. Uh, I think your own backyard. So it's Glenn from the Haunted Walk, which I believe is from Ottawa. So Eric, let's key up Glenn. Yeah, hello. Oops, hey, hello, Glenn, uh, go ahead. You're on you a walk okay? in Ottawa? Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. I, um, I know a lot of people are going to be very excited by the news today with being able to expand uh, the sizes of uh, groups uh, for events and a, a number of other uh, restrictions that have been lifted, uh, which are which are wonderful. Um, one of the challenges that uh, many of us face is that with the the two meter distancing um, requirement, which I know is um, recommended by the federal government, um, 
we that does greatly reduce you know the capacity almost is a, an irrelevant issue if when the distancing uh, requires you to reduce capacities anyway um many other countries i think canada is one of the last countries in the world that's still maintaining two two meters um and quebec actually now has moved to 1.5 meters distancing for any kind of performance situation where the where the um the audience is stationary or not talking as much um is there been any discussion in these phases toward uh, reducing the two meter um, requirement for um, certain types of uh, safer experiences? Uh, thanks, Glenn. I, I appreciate um, I appreciate the question. So this is the final stage, and so what what uh, the process has allowed for uh, is an evolution over uh, over a period of time as it relates to um, an, analyzing the data. So um, the chief medical officer of health will always provide us with the guidance. Obviously, call cabinet ultimately makes the decision um, that we have chosen to go with the science. And at this point in time, he is recommending uh, the two-meter distance. Um, in Ottawa, where you're at and where I'm from, uh, you're now eligible to have 100 people. I know that might be tough for you, but um, to... to physically be able to do that, but you will be uh, allowed that uh, in the outdoor. Um, for anybody offering a, sort of an indoor tour, that would be 50 people. Um, and and as the, the Premier stated earlier today, as to the Finance Minister, uh, we'll continue to look at how we can best support sectors. And uh, that also means um, what does it look like in terms of even easing further uh, crowd restrictions. And so this... Um, Announcement today is very much, I, I would say, the, the, the beginning of, of stage three, but certainly not the end, uh, because it will be one that is uh, uh, full of evolution and adaptability. And so I appreciate your comment. I'll certainly raise it uh, with the chief medical officer of health, who we meet with frequently um, as a cabinet. Uh, but until uh, that uh, that time, uh, we are maintaining the uh, the hundred person outside rule fifty people inside rule with the physical distancing. Um, and of course, in our city, it is mandatory to wear a mask. And uh, obviously, we recommend uh, continued um, hand sanitation. Now, I thought Minister Glenn might have also asked you if ghosts have to keep a two-meter distance. And Darcy, <laughs> you have to keep it safe there. Yeah, you know what? We should get Glenn on. Are you still on, Glenn? No, okay. I was going to say he could give us a little history lesson right there. He's yeah, quite a splash just... down there, Tim. I know. I'd love to do it. I seriously want to do that. And I know my eldest daughter will want to do that, too. All right. Well, let's keep rolling here. We got Bob uh, now. So, Eric, let's uh, put Bob in the line. And Minister Bob wants to ask about funding for the RTOs, the Regional Tourism Organizations. Bob, you're joining us live. Please go ahead. Okay. It's Bob Harris. I was speaking from the riding of South Kitchener. Uh, Hessler. Hessler. Hessler, yes. I'd like to compliment the minister on the release of funds to the RTOs. Um, you made the announcement here at the Butterfly Conservatory about, I think, about maybe a week and a half ago. I can say RTO4 has taken that money and uh, developed four funding streams, which really are directed towards digital and innovation and um, sort of taking a jump ahead into the future. We couldn't have done it without your help and assistance. Thank you very much. Wow, Minister. I could use I could use more questions like that one. Thank you very much. Uh, let me let me just expand. I just announced another twenty million dollars. So the, what uh, Bob was referring to was the thirteen million dollars in marketing funding for hyper hyper local tourism, which was spawn my tour to demonstrate. You know, we'll have to spend some money, obviously, to get people doing things. But I think, uh, given the market research we've seen, they also expect that community leaders. Um, get out and support their local economy uh, by demonstrating the safety uh, protocols that are in place in some of these areas. Uh, what we've done is now we've asked every MPP in the Ontario legislature to also be a tourist in their in their own community and, and promote some of the videos that we've done to showcase what you can do uh, in your own area. And I've uh, asked Beth Potter of the Tourism Industry Association to uh, to join me for a call with MPPs in the next week or two uh, so she can talk about how our, our tourism operators across Ontario can actually host community leaders and get them to start creating some momentum, really amplify um, 
what it means to travel our province and rediscover it. And then, of course, uh, we're, we're announcing today an additional $20 million to the regional tourism organizations um, so that they can be in a position next year. And, of course, um, we'll continue to uh, work with the Minister of Finance for the uh, the fall budget uh, to see what else we can do to support this industry. But thank you very much. And that Butterfly uh, Conservatory was, was quite something. It was, it was uh, a real treat. In fact, Tim Hudak, they told me that uh, you were the last tourism minister to be there. Oh wow! I uh, I remember that was a blast. I'm glad that you were there too. And it was I have this actually on my wall when I was a tourism minister because a butterfly landed on my nose. And they told me that. Report. Did they? <laughs> they got a picture <laughs> in the paper. It was awesome. <laughs> and it, and it tasted really good too. No, that's that's not that's not true. It didn't, it didn't go that far. I shouldn't say that. All right. So let's uh, let's uh, move on here again, folks. You're listening to this release McLeod, who uh, has some very good news uh, to share today that uh, your have more business opportunities coming up. We'll get more people out and about. She's fighting for you. We know there's a, a, a long path to recovery, but at least we're on that path. We have over 660 people currently on the call. And please, again, press three on your phone. Press three on your phone, and we'll put you on with the minister directly. Next question, minister, is coming from uh, Brett. Uh, Brett was wondering which areas are proceeding into stage three and where to get more information on uh, what stage three means. So, Brett, let's put you on live here. Brett, welcome. You're joining us live. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Minister McLeod. Um, I live in Powassan. I'm pretty good. Um, I've been on a few of your calls. Um, I hear that you say a lot of things about um, like Rainy River and everything north of uh, North Bay and usually south of um, Bracebridge. We're in, we're in between, and I just don't know what level I am in right now. Uh, if I'm still in level two or level three, and I own a campground, it's not very big. It's got five cottages and ten trailers. Well, I can say that there's no one going to clear the the market share um, on the word Powassan except for Vic Fidelli. Uh, he's very, very proud of that community, and I can tell you today that you are um, cleared for Friday. Um, your your area is uh, in North Bay is um, is deemed to move into stage three, and I I was uh, the, the only I, I was last in the north uh, in, um, in in Sault Ste Marie, but I was just time before that up there with Vic uh, in North Bay, and certainly is uh, our intention. If David McLaughlin's on the line from the RTO up there, we're going to be spending uh, five to seven days up in the north. Uh, trying to cover the whole ground uh, in a week so that we can get everywhere. So um, not trying to um, ignore any part of the province, trying to get everywhere I possibly can. Um, and uh, and I know that with the RTOs, I've got the right people uh, that can take me to the right places so I can support you all. And, and again, um, just... Uh, You've got an incredible member in, in Vic Fidelli who uh, is always talking about your community. So thank you very much. All right, terrific. So again, folks, you're listening to the, I believe, the seventh uh, town hall for the Heritage uh, Sport, Culture, and Tourism the Industry Sector, hosted by Minister Lisa McLeod. I'm Tim Hudak, CEO of the Ontario Real Estate Association. Please do hit number three uh, on your phone, and we'll get you uh, hooked up to talk to the minister directly, just like we did there with uh, Brett. Minister, there's a big question I'm sure a lot of folks listening are. Uh, interested in the answer. This one comes from Rory Ring. Rory sent this question in from Sault Ste. Marie, Chamber of Commerce. So Rory says, when can we get food services open for uh, indoor service? And I know you got some good news today. Yeah, Rory, good question. I'll, I'll be quick. If you live in one of the stage three areas, which you do, um, you're able to dine in as a Friday. And I know that's been great news. Uh, we've had some pretty good weather uh, to this date. We've had a pretty good run, but uh, we want to make sure that we help help those uh, dine in restaurants. And so uh, as a Friday uh, in, in many parts of the province, that'll happen. All right, again, through lots of questions uh, here, lots of information from Minister McLeod and a lot of good news in terms of what she's had to get uh, successfully through uh, cabinet to help support the sector. So let's now go to an issue. I know my old hometown of Fort Erie is a big one and Windsor and other areas, and that's uh, bingo halls. Uh, Brenda, welcome to the telephone town hall. Please go ahead. Brenda, Minister you're joining McLeod. us. Lot. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Minister McLeod. Um, Good afternoon. Asking the, asking the question about bingo halls, because it was said that casinos were going to open, and uh, I'm a director of the Ontario Clyde and Bowls Association, which is a PSO. Um, and a lot of our local zone associations run bingos to help support 
the programs that they do at their level. And uh, single holes were mentioned in this. So I'm wondering if that is coming under the category of casinos. Well, look, I got to tell you something. You're going to have a, a pretty good laugh. But my first job when I was 14 years old was working at the Legion Bingo at uh, at the Glasgow Stadium. So obviously, uh, it was something I used to enjoy with my mom, my grandma. Um, but uh, just to let you know, um, as long as you are adhering to the uh, phys physical distancing rules, as well as the uh, limit of 50 people, you're able to proceed uh, with bingo. Okay, terrific. Straight up answer. Real, real quick again, hit three. We're getting through a ton of questions today, a lot of details announced by the provincial government. Let's um, bounce back now to the world of sport minister. This is a pre-submitted question from Julie Stevens with Canada Games out of St. Catharines. Uh, Julie asks, when will final decisions be made to host or postpone or cancel major games uh, in sport hosted on Ontario for 2020 and 2021? So particularly, she's asked what the status of the 2021 Canada Summer Games in Niagara the 2020 Ontario Summer Games in London. So thanks very much, uh, Julie. So 2020 Ontario Games, we uh, we have postponed. Uh, we will continue to fund them. My hope is to get down to London at some point uh, to reannounce them uh, for 2021. Uh, similarly, we're, we're, we have not taken a decision uh, to postpone the 2021 Canada Games. It's our hope that uh, we've been able to spread, uh, contain the spread of COVID-19 and continue that investment into Niagara. Uh, I've said repeatedly, I think that 2021 could be a marquee year for the province of Ontario, um, not just in sport. In fact, uh, not only do we have the 55 plus uh, games that I've uh, re-announced last week in Peterborough, uh, the Canada Games in Niagara and the Ontario Games in London, uh, but we also have the Grey Cup and the Junos. Uh, we have a number of other uh, key events and milestones. Uh, the 50th anniversary, for example, of Ontario Place, the 45th of the Royal, uh, sorry, the 80th of the Royal Botanical Gardens. And so I think that we could really build a nice year um, to reconnect and rediscover Ontario uh, and, and really amplify that marketing money. We've talked about the 13 million in addition to uh, working uh, with Destination Canada, because I think by then it should be safe for us to welcome other parts of Canada and, and I know we have an Atlantic bubble, and I think when we start to ease those restrictions, uh, we really should be looking at uh, sport hosting as well as um, other uh, milestones to be part of our broader uh, tourism strategy that can help us propel Ontario forward uh, 2021 and beyond. Again, we want to press S3 uh, on your phones, uh, folks. If you'd like to ask uh, the minister a question uh, directly, provide advice, please hit S3 on your phones. We'll put you through uh, on our calls. Uh, Minister, I'm going to do another one uh, here uh, that was a pre-submitted uh, question. You talked in your opening remarks about your tour across the province. I know you were down my way in Vineland recently. You've been along the Trent Severn Waterway through uh, Peterborough, the ROM uh, in uh, Toronto, the Fanshawe Pioneer Village, and you plan on continuing to travel across the province. I think it shows uh, fantastic leadership in helping build up consumer confidence by seeing you do that going to our amazing uh, sites across the province. So this question actually is from Yara Salama. Yara is uh, with the Ontario Craft Brewers. And Yara's question is, which communities in Ontario will you be visiting next? And are you available to visit an Ontario Craft Brewery in person? Oh, sure. Look, I am going to be in Vaughan tomorrow, Hamilton on Wednesday. Um, Thursday, I'm doing something very cool with Air Canada. Uh, Friday, I'm back home in Ottawa for my first in-person speech, and I hope Michael Crockett's on the line and Nina Kressler from uh, Ottawa Tourism and, and the Shaw Centre in Ottawa uh, will be doing that. I'm very excited. And then going, like I said, on a three-week tour, um, I believe up to Renfrew into Steve Clark's area around Westport area, um, down, I believe, to Cornwall at some point, and then and making my way back. And um, really thrilled. So if anyone has any suggestions, go to minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Uh, provide me with where you think I should go, uh, what riding you're in, what your local MPP is, so we can make sure they're included. And if I can attend, that they're there. And uh, we have done a number of cool things. Uh, I've been to a number of them. Amsterdam here in uh, Toronto, the Craft Brewery. Um, I've been uh, to Thornbury up in Blue Mountain. Um, so a number of places. Uh, actually, I like to say I'm not a beer drinker, but I've been collecting it. And uh, so I've become very popular with a couple of the other cabinet colleagues as a result of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I know I would be with you, Hudak, if I were to go down here. Um, and in Celebrate, <laughs> and in, and in, and in the Celebrate uh, Ontario 2020 funding, 
Uh, we uh, supported uh, at the uh, Because Beer Craft uh, Beer Festival in Hamilton with $20,000, the Spadina Fort York uh, Toronto Cider Festival 2020 with uh, $23,799. Uh, so we're happy to uh, happy to participate. And again, if anyone on the on the call today has any ideas where they think I should go or my colleagues, uh, please let me know. I think um, the you know, one of the things I have to do as the minister, and by the way, I am safe, I am healthy, and I have been throughout every corner of this province with the exception of the north, which I'll get to soon, and uh, I've done so safely, and the people I've been with have done so safely. And so that is a, a real testament to the people of this province that when I walk into um, a tourism or a cultural attraction anywhere in this province, we have proper, properly hand sanitized. We've been wearing our masks. We've been effectively social distancing. We followed the rules and we have stayed safe. All right, almost 700 people on this call with Minister Lisa McLeod to talk to you uh, about what's going to be happening in the heritage, tourism, culture, and recreation uh, industries. Press three on your phone. We're getting in a ton of calls and questions today. So let's get to the next one. Minister, this is uh, Mark Saunders, or sorry, well, anyway, Mark from Saunders Farm in Ottawa. Mark, go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you very much for taking my call, Minister, and thanks for all of your work. I know uh, it, these are challenging times, and we're truly grateful for your, your guidance and your government's guidance through this. Um, many farms across, uh, thank you, yeah, many farms across um, Ontario are um, uh, anxiously or hopefully or optimistically hoping for some sort of a, a pumpkin festival or a fall festival on their properties, uh, not just farms, but other, you know, uh, adventure parks or, or nature facilities. And the current gathering guideline is, um, you know, 100, uh, up to 100. And it's a little bit vague because it, it um, uh, you know, it, it, uh, if you were doing time ticketing, you could potentially have more, but on different parts of the property and whatnot. And I, I'm wondering, I know Alberta has come up with a plan where they have the number of people per square meter outside um, for outdoor adventure parks or nature facilities. And um, so, if, for instance, if you had a 50-acre farm, you could have 500 people uh, and all socially distanced and whatnot. So I'm just wondering if there's been any uh, discussions about um, uh, creating uh, outdoor events uh, based on the size of the venue or the, the space that, that could be utilized. Is this Mark Saunders from Saunders Farm? Yes, it is. Hi. Oh, <laughs> great to chat with you. Can I just say, because when I was up in London area near Aylmer, I went to Clovermead Bee Farm and we were yes. talking about you. I hope your ears were burning. Oh, Chris is an amazing person. Chris is yeah, they have a great spot. It, it really reminds yeah. me you know, like of, of your facility. So here's what I'm going to answer is, one, we still have to, to maintain the rules of 100 outside, 50 indoor, again, with the physical distancing. You're in the city of Ottawa, so obviously uh, um, in, indoor will, will require a mask. Um, that said, you're looking at a few months out. And we've seen how far we've come as a province in the last four months. Uh, so uh, gathering sizes may at that time uh, change uh, as long as we continue to do what we're required to do. In addition, for anybody that is a part of your organization, I don't know if you have a special organization actually for outdoor and nature facilities, um, but we'd be happy to entertain uh, through the ministry. Um, your, your proposals, just as I said, we would do with amusement parks and water parks, uh, as well as our convention centers and our hotel meeting spaces, uh, to take a specific proposal uh, to the Chief Medical Officer of Health on your behalf and on the behalf of others. And, uh, you know, we are, uh, we recognize that um, that as, as much as uh, most of Ontario is reopening today, there still are a lot that aren't, um, particularly as, as it res results, uh, relates to, sorry, the regional uh, uh, reopening, but at the same time, um, I, when you have a list of five things that aren't opening, that's still a lot of people um, within our sector. So happy to do that, Mark, and uh, look forward to having a conversation with you. And again, uh, minister.mcleod at uh, ontario.ca. And, and I know that uh, Susan and Nancy and our teams are, uh, are on the call as well, so that they'll uh, be able to do those uh, reach outs, whether that's with Attractions Ontario or uh, TIO or other organizations that might support you. Minister, the next uh, caller is somebody who I could always count on for great advice and insight, and I know uh, you do as well, is Beth Potter from the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. Beth, uh, welcome back to uh, Ms. McLeod's uh, Telephone Town Hall. Please go ahead. Thanks very much, uh, Tim. Great to speak with you again. Um, and I'll just say, you know, back in the day when you were um, uh, in government, I think you would have preferred to, to visit the craft distilleries. 
<laughs> so true. And the wineries. So true. <laughs> yeah, and the wineries. <laughs> anyway, Minister, I um, thanks so much for the great news today. Um, I wanted to just um, ask if you could um, maybe explain a little bit more of the process around um, how sectors can uh, submit plans to um, expand their opening um, if they're not uh, on the list yet. Uh, we talked about this, and we know that you know Tayo has been working with um, lots of the different sectors within the industry to create protocols um, to uh, get you know that will tick all the boxes for the chief health medical officer. How did, how did those sectors get those plans into, um, into you and, and or through you to the chief health medical officer for, um, for approval? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Basta. That's a great question. So as I stated, through the ministerial advisory committees, a number of these ideas have come forward. I know, um, we, you know, not to tell anything out of tale because I was asked by the media, but Calypso Water Park, for example, was one. Um, another being uh, Santa's Village uh, up of Muskoka. So we've already started to advance those. Obviously, the two convention centers were working with um, uh, um, Cineplex uh, Odeon so that we can support the movie theater. So we're already starting to do that. So I know my team of ADMs are on there. Uh, you know, Kevin Finnerty is doing a lot with the cultural side and tourism. Um, and we have a, a Sarah McLaughlin is working uh, with uh, our agencies and attractions. And of course, Steve Harlow, God bless that guy with all of the sports that uh, he's been ushering through. So that's been great. And of course, you can always go through our office so that we can go to the command center. We'll work directly with the ministry. And then finally, uh, if you would prefer uh, to go right to by yourself to the command center, you can go to ontario.ca backslash reopen. Um, and so there's always that opportunity, ontario.ca backslash reopen, or come to the ministry and we can champion it. And it's always helpful. Um, I know that we've had a, a number of these, uh, you know, when we when we knew we were moving in this direction, we're able to reach out, uh, for example, to Terry Mundell um, at the Hotel Association to start looking at some of these proposals. Once there was a process in place, which there now is. And so we're happy to do that take it to the command center uh, table and uh, they can they can let us know if, if it's a go um, or if there needs to be changes or if it's just uh, not at this time but we're certainly very open to supporting these sectors at this time uh, ladies and gentlemen we have the minister uh, mcleod uh, for 15 more minutes please do press three on your phone you can ask the minister a question uh, directly as she has been doing you see how candid how open and transparent she is and enthusiastic about a brighter path ahead. I'll do one more here from our pre-submitted questions, Minister, then go back to the uh, calls. This one comes from Nancy Tudorash. She's with the Globus, Global Business Travel Association out of Burlington. And I know you're doing a hell of a lot in your own tour. You're encouraging MPPs to do their local tours and their ridings. And Nancy's question is, what steps is the Ontario government taking to help businesses gain traveler confidence and promote return to business travel strategies? Thanks, Nancy. Uh, key to this is making sure that um, that we we invest the um, appropriate number of uh, marketing dollars. And I think our first stage in, in terms of the hyper local marketing is quite critical to deal with the um, reticence that we are starting to see with consumer behavior, whether or not somebody would like to go dine into a hotel. Uh, sorry, dine in at a restaurant or uh, take uh, part in a tourism attraction or stay overnight in a hotel. And I think one of the things that I've tried to do is traveling the province to make sure that I can demonstrate that I have a great degree of confidence in the safety of myself and my team and asking local MPPs and mayors and others that are community leaders to go off and do, do the same. And I think, um, you know, as we start to move into stage three, and we start to see what's happening in the United States, we may see a little bit more anxiety. Um, having said that, I, I feel quite safe uh, because I follow the rules, and I think others do too. And then I think as we start to move into uh, the next phase of, um, of, of reopenings or next uh, wave of reopenings, if you will, um, and, and people start to get more comfortable, and then we start to see the easing of restrictions uh, among the other provinces that we focus on domestic tourism and, um, and staycations that way. But I certainly think that it's going to require uh, a targeted investment of money um, and, and a demonstrated uh, effort by uh, leaders to showcase that it is safe to travel. One of the cool things that came out of um, 
I think I was in Halliburton with Laurie Scott last week, was this, uh, was this idea by the local councillors to actually showcase each of their wards. And I thought, what a great idea if there was a way we could support that across the province. Perhaps that's something I speak to uh, my, my municipal affairs and, and housing counterpart about, you know, how do we get local leaders amplifying the message through Destination Ontario, our RTOs and DMOs, um, so that it's it's real. That uh, you know, when I first took an airplane, people were like, "Well, what's it like? What was it like to stay in a hotel? What was it like to you know go to the en route st- stop?" And I think we've all been there. And I've now ha- have my own level of comfort, and I think that's what's going to be that's what's going to be critical. And that will take money, but it will also take leading by example. Okay, terrific. I know uh, one thing that my daughter Miller is uh, asking me is when can we go to our, our local museums? Uh, in Niagara again. So let's go to Kathy from uh, Bruce County. I think who has a similar question about community museums. Kathy, welcome to the Lisa McLeod Show. Hi there. How are you? We're great, Kathy. I didn't know I had my own show, but there you go. You do now. <laughs> <laughs> Big enthusiastic well, audience. That's great. Are you a long time listener? <laughs> yes, I am actually, right from the very first town hall. So thank you so much for uh, for putting on these town halls. They've been excellent to keep us all uh, all in the loop of what's going on. Um, so as mentioned, I'm with the Bruce County Museum and Cultural Center in Southampton, and uh, we're getting prepped to reopen. Um, so I, my question was in regards to the 50 number for the indoor spaces. So is that inclusive of the staff as well? Uh, no. So you'll be able to have your staff and then an additional 50 people there. So um, I'm not sure if you're in Bruce Gray Owen Sound or here on Bruce, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm quite close with both of your uh, both of your uh, cabinet ministers up there, and they have requested that I go up and visit. So we're going to be up there in a couple of weeks. So make sure that uh, you send in your details so we can try and stop by and I can meet you in person. Tim, did you cut her off? Okay, hey, great, care. great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That would be a great place Thank this you. time of year to travel to. That would be awesome. Um, all right. So, uh, again, folks, uh, please uh, do press uh, number three uh, on your phones uh, to ask the minister a question. We do have uh, Minister Lisa McLeod uh, available for your input and your questions about today's announcement and what it means for you, your business, and your customers until 3 p.m. So, it's still about 10 minutes left uh, in today's uh, telephone town hall. So, let me go back to uh, one of the questions we had. And this one, uh, is uh, from uh, from northwestern uh, Ontario. Nicole uh, Archer from the Moosehorn Lodge in Sioux Lookout asks, what steps are being taken to help tourism in northwestern Ontario? Yeah, we did a, a great telephone town hall uh, last week with uh, Minister Greg Rickford, and I know um, you know the northwestern uh, outfitters are having a very rough go. We invested uh, over $18 million in support in the north, um, for heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries uh, to get everyone up and running. And I know I've got another announcement coming up with David McLaughlin, who does assure me he's actually on the call, which is fantastic, uh, to talk a little bit more about tourism in the in the weeks ahead when I get up there. And, uh, you know, we have, um, we have a $4.1 million dedicated northern marketing budget uh, with a dedicated team to support northern tourism stakeholders that work closely with Destination Northern Ontario. Uh, and destination marketing organizations and with tourism operators. So we're going to continue to do that. Um, and obviously, I'm looking forward to getting up there uh, in due course uh, to, to to show my own support. And I know you have very three very strong and vocal ministers up there. I obviously had the opportunity to mention Minister Rickford and, and as well as uh, Minister Fideli. Uh, but Minister Romano has also been a, a very strong supporter in the Sioux for our tourism and culture industries. And so uh, I look forward to getting up there and supporting the best I, I can. And uh, as we look forward to the, uh, the fall budget, um, it will be interesting to see um, how we can best uh, align our our, our requirements uh, with, with the broader package uh, across the province. Minister, maybe you could help uh, with this question and uh, help us uh, sort through all of the information that's come out today around uh, live performances and crowds and such. So Kim Blackwell had uh, written in before today's announcement, and Kim is with the Fourth Line Theatre out of Millbrook, Ontario. Kim asked, what are the ministry's plans to support live performance for the next year? as we deal with the complete shutdown of our sector. So what's, what's the news today for live performance? What are the ministry's plans to help them in the time ahead? 
Yeah, I, as I said, we we already flowed um, some celebrate Ontario money. Uh, I, as I said, uh, and I got the dirty look from Susan on. It was the uh, the uh, fact that we were going to create another stream of, of festivals at this point in time. Uh, we did work with the music industry for MusicTogether.ca. Uh, we leveraged our hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars in um, investment with uh, one hundred and fifty thousand was raised directly from the music industry to continue to support that. And uh, we are uh, um, we are flowing over $100 million in the music fund, Celebrate, and the Ontario Trillium Foundation to do uh, what we can we can do best in order to support these areas. And I, I recognize that the federal government has recently come out with a, with another um, level of support there. So we're, con- we're continuing to look at what kind of uh, targeted investments we can make in a post-COVID-19 environment, but also um, after the, the fall budget. Uh, to see how we can best uh, support this sector. It's really important to me that um, it has support and is uh, able to thrive next year. Let's go back to our lines. And again, folks, we have the uh, Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries, Lisa McLeod, with her seventh telephone town hall. You can ask us your question by pressing three on your phones. The next one we have, Minister Joe from Rugby Canada, wants to discuss return to play. Joe, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's uh, Joe Schuster calling from Rugby Ontario. Um, first of all, I just want to say thanks for the platform um, and for the opportunity to ask the question. Um, so my question is fairly specific regarding team sports in which body contact is an integral component of the sport. Um, in stage three, the, the plan mentions that uh, team sports will be allowed um, to move forward if uh, we can modify or prevent uh, prolonged or deliberate contact. Um, so a sport like for a sport like rugby, does this mean that we are able to play touch or flag variations of the game? Yeah, that's a great question. So each uh, each sport in some way, shape, or form is going to have to adapt. The, the two that I can tell you, like right off the bat, that won't be uh, a flag that won't be supported by the chief medical officer of health at this time will be um, wrestling or judo because it is uh, prolonged. Um, direct contact. Uh, that said, in, in sports like rugby and football, uh, we, there, there, there is an ability for you to adapt. And so we created Ontario.ca bash, backslash return to play, uh, where those return to play uh, protocols and guidelines are in place from your, uh, your local uh, provincial sport organization or the national sport organization. Um, and if, if further adaptations are required, then we'll just take that to the uh, chief medical officer of health. I'm unsure, if, are you with with a rugby Ontario, rugby Canada, or with a, a league, because um, because we might be able to. Um, well, actually, we can just provide you with that at Ontario.ca backslash return to play uh, immediately, uh, where those protocols are in place. And it's interesting because a return to play for us a year ago, Rowan's Law, uh, the Canada's first concussion legislation, was my private member's bill in opposition. And return to play uh, was really something that we talked to. It was synonymous with uh, concussion return to play um, or post-concussion return to play. And now, uh, you know, a year later, um, looking at uh, COVID-19, it's, uh, it, it's quite something. Our next caller is uh, Zant from uh, Tourism uh, London. And I know, uh, Minister, that uh, London has... Uh, taken up a, a lot of uh, capacity in sport hosting. I think my old alma mater there, Western University, a big part of that. So Zant calling in from Tourism London. Please go ahead with your question for the minister. Hi, Minister. Thank you so much for traveling to London the other week to visit our attractions. As you mentioned, we, uh, we appreciate your support as always. And we're excited to hear about the Stage 3 openings today, especially as they relate to sport. Um, my question is about the Ontario Sport Hosting Grant Program. I'm wondering when applications from the February intake will be awarded, similar to what was done for Blockbuster funding in those festivals, and when the uh, the next intake will open to allow us to pursue future sport tours and hosting events for 2022, 23, 24 to help with the COVID recovery. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite programs that we have. I would love, uh, I, I, I'm going to get in trouble again, but I would love to expand it. It's just, it's super. It, it uh, brings so many people into the province, uh, gets people circulating. Uh, nothing gets people excited uh, like uh, live sports, um, and nothing gets people excited like live music. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be investing $3 million in sport hosting, and then there will be another intake in August. And so, um, th- so that's important. So if you're interested in, in competing for uh, a sport hosting event, uh, your application uh, will open again uh, next month. And uh, then those uh, that can, that we've already uh, awarded 
but couldn't proceed. We're honoring uh, our commitment to them and, and hopefully in, in some cases might be able to uh, just to have been postponed. So we're not quite sure, uh, in, you know, in terms of sport by sport what that means. But certainly in terms of uh, the next intake, that will be open soon. Um, in addition to that, uh, the Canada the Canada Games, um, we will be, uh, I will be coming back to London the next couple of weeks. And I'll have more to say about that, but we certainly hope... Um, London does a great job, and and uh, it was really great to be in London uh, last week. As you know, my chief of staff, Susan Trupe, used to be a, uh, a provi- uh, sorry a member of parliament for the London area. So um, I think what uh, she's actually right here and across the table from me. When am I going back to London? Uh, we can have. <laughs> A week and a half. <laughs> I'll be back in a week and a half, and we'll get together then and talk a little bit more about sports. Ms. Rolofsky, this question, because it came up, you mentioned the um, the northern uh, call that you did uh, last week with the uh, northern minister, Greg uh, Rickford. The big issue was when will the border open up to the state? So perhaps you could uh, just update everybody uh, on the call where things uh, sit with the American border. And that was a question we actually did get from Shelley Crawford, who's with Meeting Encore out of uh, Keswick, Ontario. Yeah, I, I um, have had no formal discussions other than I, I, I would be surprised um, if it did, in fact, open on the 21st of July, just given the um, spread of COVID-19 uh, throughout the United States and our a great deal of success in containing the spread of COVID-19, um, it's, it's, it's easy to sometimes uh, forget that this is, first and foremost, a public health crisis. And uh, we have done everything we possibly could do in Ontario to um, to, to uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19. But it still is a very real threat. And, um, you know, I think the premier of our province, uh, Premier Ford, has been very clear that uh, until they've uh, been able to prevent the spread of COVID-19, that um, that he doesn't support opening the borders. And so, again, I think when I look at um, tourism or uh, even sport, uh, because so many things that we do um, are um, across each of the borders, I would view it this way. Uh, for the next foreseeable future, we are looking at hyperlocal tourism, you know, within the province of Ontario, re- reconnecting with our neighbours and our communities, and encouraging people from from Ottawa to go to Kenora, um, from Niagara to go to Windsor, um, from London to go to North Bay, uh, and and every point in between. I think as we start to see the gradual uh, easing of restrictions uh, with our interprovincial borders, then we can have a discussion probably in the next few months about what does domestic staycations look like when we're actually targeting those from other provinces. And then I think finally, when it becomes safe to do so and our borders are open, and that's not just the border to the United States, but to other jurisdictions as well, um, That and, and likely when there's a vaccine uh, to really uh, promote the uh, international travelership that uh, we saw pre-COVID-19 um, in, in 2019 levels. And I think that we're a couple of years off from that. And I, I want to be perfectly honest with you. And, I, and I've always said that we were hit first hard and it will take longest to recover. And we've now been into this for four months and we still um, see some real challenges south of the border and, and some other countries that traditionally would be places like, for example, the United Kingdom uh, that we would um, see a lot of visitors from. So uh, safety first and we're doing our part. And so many parts of this province will um, start to see most of their businesses, you know, get open on Friday. But we, we still, without a vaccine, uh, can't answer some of these questions. Miss, we're now at 4 p.m. Uh, on uh, the nose. We covered uh, a huge amount of territory, so thank you. Let me just say as we wrap up, thank you, number one, for doing these uh, telephone town halls. You've demonstrated how uh, open uh, you are and, and candid and listening. Number two, you went to bat. Uh, and uh, received uh, a lot of additional funding and uh, needed sensible regulatory uh, change and program adjustments to help out folks uh, on this call and their colleagues across the province. And then number three, uh, the very good news uh, today that we have a better path ahead and you're helping lead the way with your own province-wide tour and invite the folks to invite you to visit their facility. So thank you for that. And why don't I turn it over to you for some concluding remarks? 
Well, listen, thank you, Tim. I think we all really enjoy um, how you moderate this, um, and you do a great job. And again, want to say thanks to all those on the call today. Great questions. Um, but again, call, you know, email minister.mcleod at ontario.ca if you have any further questions, or if you're not included in today's uh, reopening as a result of uh, um, what, what the staging has said. Uh, and and uh, we will work as we as we most possibly can to get you uh, the support you need. And um, and then if I could just reiterate, um, and I know it's probably on behalf of everybody who's interacted with this ministry, my deep gratitude to all of the staff um, in the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries. I, uh, you know, they, they have, they, they just have hearts of gold and, um they, they've just uh, been so steely through this process and making sure that um, no matter what they're dealing with at home, whether it's a spouse had a job loss, a child that uh, they're educating at home while they're working from home, uh, listening to people that they've worked with for decades, uh, you know, shutter their business. Man, they've turned up every single day to make sure I've been prepared for the Jobs and Recovery Committee, to make sure I've been, you know, prepared for Cabinet, for Treasury Board be out there on the tours that I've been, uh, you know, working with the staff on the ground, um, whether it's uh, addressing some of the policy ad adaptations we've had to, to encounter as a result of things like the Auditor General and, and or what does uh, post-COVID-19 reality look like. Uh, I, uh, I'm pretty fortunate that uh, not only do I get to work with the most creative class in the province um, through our industry partners, but to work with such dedicated public servants um, who really give public service and government a great name. So with that, um, looking forward to getting uh, into each of your communities, hopefully getting to say hello to you personally, and looking forward uh, to continuing on in this role um, so I can, I can see this recovery through. Outstanding. Thank you so much for your leadership and your time today, Minister. I want to thank everybody who was uh, on uh, the line today for their contributions, their dedication to uh, their uh, own industries and their community. So thanks for joining today's call. The Minister will receive all of this advice to inform their upcoming communications. And I remind you to please do contact your representative for the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. A lot of details came out today. A lot of information from the minister herself. So if you want some follow-up information, please do reach out and they'll get that to you. Folks, thank you very much for joining today's call and have a fantastic afternoon. Just a quick reminder, if you still have any questions or any feedback that you would like to share with Minister McLeod and the ministry, you can do so by emailing minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Just again, a reminder, you can email any questions and feedback to us at minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Thank you again. And have a good afternoon.